morning one and all, I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass or a day in the life of Steve in his shed. Bob's come in, he's already eaten something. Look at that, where are we? There you go. Go on Bob, you can have the first one. He's eaten, he's eaten. Oh dear, oh dear. I hope everyone is doing well and you're not going stir crazy or feeling as if you're hemmed in and locked in. I've just got to finish doing this stuff here that I'm doing so I can post it out on Facebook. No, I don't want to do that. I just, oh no, I want to do another one. I messed it up. I'll be, I'll be with you in a tick. Uh, that's the one I want. Share to a page. You'd think I'd have this down pat by now, wouldn't you? There you go. Got my uppercase and lowercase mixed up. I'm at that stage where I don't care. Let me rip the chat room out so I can see what's happening. I'll just pop this out here. And then it can move over to there. And that can go. We've got people in the house already. How extraordinary is that? I'll just move that over, not that one, that one can go there. All right, let's go. G'day, Ray, how are you, mate? G'day, Chad. Yes, those um, MPEG, uh, JPEGs came through really well, so I hope you got my response on that. It looks fairly soft, so I think if you've got a really sharp plane, try either direction, you might not have a drama. If not, just go across, across it, skew it. Ah, John, good morning. How are you, mate? I hope you had a good night's sleep. Or a good day's sleep, however you go. Trevor. Uh, good morning, Lucas. Good morning, Tim Tams and T today. I tell you what, I'm down. I had my last shred of wheat today. I've got things to do today. I've, I've got to go get essentials. Tim Tams are essentials. And my main computer I do editing on has crashed, died, finito, gone on holidays, not playing the game. So I've got to find a computer shop that is open that I can drop it off and hopefully we'll get it fixed. Not to worry, I've got a few computers around, but that's just my main one. Uh, good day, Jeff. How are you? Benbridge, good day. Cape Six, good morning, good afternoon. How are you? Six or so, six or so. Oh, not a drama, mate. As I've said before, if anyone wants to friend me, on or befriend me on Facebook. If you, I'm, I'm happy to do it, but there's that many scammers around, I am very reluctant to add a friend, especially if they haven't had many posts. And I understand a lot of people don't use Facebook a lot, but they just want to use it as a medium to connect with other people. So if you could send me a message or messenger or whatever, and give your um, chat room name, and then your Facebook name, and then I know that it's you, I'm happy to accept it. So if you have sent me a friend request and I haven't returned it, it's for that reason. I just want to make sure that I know who I'm dealing with. So thanks, Ben. Ben sent one. He's six knots, and he sent one and said, I'm Ben, how's your father? Um, and I want to be a friend. So not a problem. We did it. We have the capabilities. Oh, dear. Uh, Wombat, good morning. G'day, Julian. Oh, and you're that close to Glastonbury. I was thinking about that the other day. It's one place I'd like to go. And Stonehenge. But I'd love to go to Stonehenge about 50 years ago before it became a tourist destination. Uh, off today. I threw you back out of work. Oh, my God, the pain. But Steve is on. So I don't care about... Mate, that's God's little way of saying you're allowed to have a day off, but it's going to be a bit uncomfortable for you. Boof. Done. The body's like that. I, um, I know from very personal experience. It says, hey, slow down, Steve. Hey, Steve, have a break. Hey, Steve, I'm going on holidays. Um, you catch me up. <laughs> and then everything goes kind of dark until you realise. But I'm pacing myself here. I've done three weeks straight. All you people have put up with me for three weeks straight, which I think is pretty incredible. I've no, I didn't need that camera too much. I'm not worried about that. So we'll, we'll set records. Well, not world records, but definitely records for me. 
I did get the email. Thank you. Good on you, uh, Chad. Chad sent me a picture of a project he's working on and had a question and uh, sent me a, a photo and I was able to answer the question. I hope it was the right answer. Let me know how you go, mate. See, see how it works. Uh, good morning, Louise. Oh, how many weeks ago was it we were having a coffee at Centura? <laughs> Seems like a lifetime. I didn't get an email, but it doesn't matter, I'll text you. Text you my address if you want to post that. Uh, morning, Max. Yeah, the old, the old mutt's next to me. Uh, John uh, would have, would have, no, this uh, paint. Ah, well, there you go. It's saying don't try and mask me, just accept me and relax. So kick back for a couple of hours, mate, and relax. David Land, good morning. Oh. Oh, thanks for that. I appreciate that, David. I hope it is entertaining, enjoyable, and to a point, educational. <laughs> I know, I know it's educational for me because I've got to remember stuff I've forgotten. And I put in the description today, I'm going to do a sliding dovetail. And I'll be honest with you, I have not done a sliding dovetail for, I reckon, over three years. So it will be interesting to see if I can figure out. If not, I'll ring Terry up and say, hey. Uh, but a bum, but a... Oh, thanks. The hard energy out to you, my friend John. Oh, there you go. Small world, eh, Julian? The duck. Oh, you just don't want to miss Susie. You don't care about me. It's all about Sue. Well, she, she'd agree with that. She's got an interesting tale to tell, too, when she comes down. G'day, Dennis. How are you, mate? Poor man, good morning. George, welcome back. Yeah, mate, if you want, anyone wants to send me an email, um, oh, woodworkingmasterclass at gmail will get me, or my website one is admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au. Whatever floats your boat or makes you feel easier. And Ray, I apologise, mate, I didn't realise you were the only mod on yesterday, so thank you. Heart energy out to you too. You're doing a sterling job. The backbone of the chat room, the stalwart of the natterers. Uh, yeah, that was. Oh dear, oh dear, that was Louise. I think I'm going to have to go up there today, and I think that's the only computer shop I believe that is open because I really got to get this pooter fixed. Uh, <laughs> well, he is. Look at him. Look at him. Hey, eh? gets all the credit. Everybody loves him, and what does he do? Absolutely sweet Fanny Adams. Look at that. Just turns his back on me, doesn't wag the tail. No, nah, not interested at all. He was fronting up for me bloody crumb cutlets yesterday, though, weren't you? Yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> Already? We're having a BRB? Already. There you go. Good morning, Paul. Other time sounds like riding a bike. You never forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true, you never forget, but you tell you what, you fall off a few times before you remember. So, well, see, we go. I had a bit of a catastrophe last night with it. I had a couple of um, ooh-ah moments, let me say. And let me also say I was very pleased I wasn't streaming when I had the ooh-ah moments. Uh, dear. Oh, that's good, Duck, thanks. Now, what happened yesterday, this, this um, stuff's a bit bony. My bony is cranky, and I'm doing a rebate in the back of the top to fit the lining boards, which I also finished them too, so I did the other groove in there, and wouldn't you know it, the blinking plane didn't miss a beat. But anyway, so I cut a rebate here for these to fit in, and when I was planing out, I didn't want, because ugh, it's a dovetail top and one of the nice things you do with dovetails is you make sure that you don't cut through a dovetail so I had to come in behind it and put this groove in like that and I was planing quite nicely until I got to here when we had a bit of grain direction change and all of a sudden I ripped a huge bit out so I've glued it back on and then I used 
the hand router to do the best I could and then I couldn't quite get up the end so I whipped out Stanley 90. This is a great little plane too, I'll show you why. I'll, I will show you for why. Because it's also a chisel plane. Where I go right up to the end of this tail here, I've got, what's that? Quarter inch, maybe half an inch between the end of the blade and the end of the plane. But with these, they convert quite easily into what's called a chisel plane. So there you go. So now I can actually take it right, whoops, right up to the end and it'll take it up to there, which I did. So I've, I've recouped that quite nicely and I'll just knock that bit off there whilst I'm here. So there you go, that's the plane I, um, I used to use a lot until I got onto Terry's planes. There's, I think Sweetheart have just bought a new range of these out. And also that acts as an adjustable mouth, so you can adjust the mouth a bit like that. So there's uh, four planes in this series. That's a 90. Oh, let me put that up there. That's a 93. Same thing, it will turn into a chisel plane. Very, very similar to that on the back part, as you can see. Narrow, obviously, and longer. And then you've got a 93, which is the same size as the 90. And again, has the same body, but longer. Um, extension so you can use that as a rebate plane and then the other one is a 94 which is I think it's about an inch and a half wide and much much bigger I've only ever seen one in real life and it was a bit of a junker so I didn't bother getting that this one I use where are we this one I used to use a heck of a lot uh, in box making Again, before I got into Terry stuff, because it's nice for doing rebates on boxes. So there you go, there's a little crash course in some planes you might not have seen before. What else are we up to? Oh, oh no, no, no. duck, got me thinking, is it too hard for Terry to make a left-handed philister for a friend? I would say so, yes, mate. It really is, because to do that, everything has to be changed. The uh, angle of the, let's move this here. The angle of the extraction chute would have to be around the other side. All these fittings would have to be put on the other side. This would have to be put on the other side. And yeah, it would be an absolute nightmare. He was going to, with the plough planes, he was saying he was going to make right and left. I said, you little ripper. And then he, he said, no, he said, there's not many left-handed people around. I said, me, me. He said, no, you're going to have to learn right-handed. So there you go. Oh, dear. Good day, Tango. How are you, mate? Welcome into the shed again. I'm trying to figure how long you've been following me, Tango. It'll be a few years now, wouldn't it? Oh, well, yeah, have you got a late note? Prunella, do you? I don't care. It wasn't the Queen's birthday yesterday. We nearly shut the stream down. We, we had a vote. We said, Prunella's not here. We can't go ahead. What are we going to do? I said, oh, well, well, we'll just see how it goes. It wasn't the same. It was very flat. But now you're here. You can whack a bit of energy in. You're feeling better and stop smiling because you're going to grin the size of a Cheshire cat on you right now. I can see it. I sense a movement in the force. Uh, no, Tim Tag. Scotch finger biscuits. Mate, I'd sack the cook. 
Truly, Trevor, that's it. I reckon that's what that cat was doing, didn't he? The neighbour cough heard that you were getting Scotch finger biscuits. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look at Trevor's latest post on Facebook. <laughs> oh, Trevor, you know how to crawl. Oh, dear. Oh, Blue, listen, it doesn't matter. Look, look at this. Look at this. Go on. There's your, there's your favourite presenter. Look at it. Lazy slob. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Vet. Vet. No, he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care, Blue Ren. He's, he's, he's not. He hasn't had many visits, a poor fella. There you go. How are you? I've got a rolling pin for you. Send me your address. <laughs> I'll see if I can get it down to you. Oh, dear. Are you, you wouldn't mind being locked down where you are, would you, Blue Ring? Lovely place, providing it's not snowing. It's got, you've got an overload of woodworking masterclass in your blood. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> We all love you, Blue Wren, we do. It's just I get confused with the hair colours all the time, but it's all right. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's, he's, it's like a sleeping child. You don't wake them up to see how they are. You just leave them. Yeah, you see, we were trendsetters before it became popular. That's it. Are you doing any more art? Any more embroidery? I love you. I loved your mouse one. That was cool. Hey, yeah, Ben, I did hear. I don't know how true it was, but I heard that if you try to go to Brisbane from the Gold Coast, they're going to turn you around. Haven't, haven't had it confirmed, but I did hear that from someone who was living on the Gold Coast. you go. That's nice because it's not delicate, is it? You can just slap it on. It's what the Renaissance masters used to use. I've got some here, actually. I've got some white stuff, uh, white gouchy. They, um, hang on, I'll see if I can find it. I'm not going to just uh, mongrel. Let me have a look. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Is that it? No, that's... Oh, yeah. Oh, no, gesso, I'm thinking. Thinking gesso. I've got some... Um, the Libron products again. Gee, they look after me. They're good people, Libron. Where are we going? Whiting. Traditional powder which, together with rabbit skin, forms basic gesso. And, yeah, I've got rabbit skin glue here as well. And they used it on that stuff on uh, gold leaf. But I have never tried it. And my Davies from Record Power has done it before. But not this little black duck. That's it, you stick it. You're going to be healthier at home anyway, my dear. No, I, I, I got it wrong. I was thinking gesso. It starts with a G. Cut me some slack. <laughs> we never did catch up, did we? We've mentioned that before. <sighs> oh, that, that's nice. What that conjured up in my mind, Duck, I was in the basement today and thinking of you, and I'm thinking of those horror movies where they dismember people in the basement. And so I noticed I was swooping from right hand to left hand. Oh, well, there you go. Well, that's a good thing. It's not what I was thinking. I thought you were at home. I'm staying on my bed and have thanked my laptop into the room too, like the hospital. Oh, okay. 
All right. You're in. Oh, that's no good. Oh, well, all right. We'll let you off. We'll cut you some slack on that one. Mm. <whistles> okay. All right. That's just about caught up on all the niceties. That, you know what that means. That means I'm going to have to do some work. Oh, yuck. All right. Oh. Well, what I'm going to have to do, I don't know how I'm going to do this because normally I sit, have a, haven't even got me thinking pipe down here. That's up in the house. I, I think, cogitate, I'll mull things over without people looking at me. So we'll see what we come up with. I was thinking there tonight, last night or this morning, all the different ways I can fit doors to this cabinet. There's so many variations. Oh, so we'll have to pick on one. Oh dear. And those that you missed yesterday, I'll mention it again today, Terry Gordon from h &T Gordon Plain has kindly donated a $300 gift voucher for any, to go towards buying one of his planes. All you have to do is send him an email. You missed this, Prunella. Send him an email, ask for a catalogue and answer a question that I will pose. I'm missing one. And the question is, there it is. What sort of timber are Terry's Gigi planes made out of? So there you go. And then he's going to pick it. It's got nothing to do with me. I, I would say his lovely daughter, Tamaris, will most likely get the winner. And we're going to run that for two weeks, so Friday week. And as I said, live when I was talking to Terry yesterday, you win either way because it doesn't cost you anything to get a catalogue. And if you're shut in, locked down, isolated, there is nothing better than looking at a nice set of tools and imagining using them. All right. Now, i got to think. Oh, I know what I've got to do. I've got to dress another one of those down, which we'll do in a tick. Yeah, I'm just looking at that drawing. There's things we can do differently with it if we want. Should have cleaned this up last night, but honestly, by the time I finished here, I think it was 10 past 7 last night, I was so wonky on my feet, I did well to get out alive. Ugh. All right, so the things I did yesterday while I was offline, what's all that doing? I don't want to go away. But -a -bum. Um, I did a rebate. Oops in the top to take the lining boards and I rebated down the sides of the back of the sides and fitted a sliding dovetail but that's not going to help me because I did that sliding dovetail a couple of years ago so I'm going to have to figure out how to do them again. Oh, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, I wanted something so I could use to hit that without damaging the side and I picked up a bit of sandpaper. That is not going to make a darn bit of difference. That's what I was meant to pick up. So now, which way are we going to go? It goes that way. So I will hold this one. We'll see how we go. Oh, 
Oh, that's what we've got to do. We've got to cut these shells down too. And what we might do, Ducky said you have one of those big machines. I've got the Matheson planes. We will, instead of ripping it down, using, give it a go out, mate. Using a saw, we'll plane it down using the big Matheson triplane. Let's see how we go. And triplane's not the same as Eric Von, whatever his name was in the, the Red Baron, he had a triplane, but it's totally different to the triplane I'm gonna use. Spelt different too. Triplane I'm using is T-R-Y. Triplane he flew was T-R-I. Oh look, just a plethora of trivia today. <sighs> okay. And what I did do here, which I, I um, wish I hadn't have, was I actually planed through the... Come here. Over this way. Come here. Tell ya. There you go. I planed through this pin, which I shouldn't have. So what I'm going to do is glue another piece on there and then I'll shave it back at some later stage. But for the time being, that will do. Oh, okay. Debacca, hey, welcome to the shed, mate. Good to see you. Brian, good morning. Where did you sneak in? Turn me back and everyone talks. And I... Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, here we go. I have heard that. <sighs> yes. Yeah, I can imagine you wouldn't want to be a landlubber. Get out on the water. Blue wren. Stay at home. Don't touch your face. Back to woodworking state. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. I can imagine you giving advice like that to your dog before you put a bucket over its head. You know, one of those, <laughs> go home, don't scratch your face. Hey, did you ever finish your kitchen? Last I heard you were putting big beams in there. Woodwork and therapy is good for it is. <clears throat> now, I like crazy because then you don't know what you're doing. Man, it's good fun. I like crazy. Ah. Oh. Oh, here we go, here we go. You should, Prunella, honestly, you should have seen Ray yesterday. He was up there, he had his little mound. I'm the king of the castle, you're the dirty rats. I'm the only moderator in. I'm holding the woodworking chat room together. Now you come along, he's going, oh, please help me. Oh, it was hard. Oh, fair dinkum. No, he did a good job, though, he did. Not as good as if you were there, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you should be afraid, very afraid. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Actually, it is. Have you ever done that oh, years ago in the 80s? Might have been the 80s. Let me see. Crikey, I can't remember. When they get in there. Yeah, 80s, no, mainly the 80s. They were talking about um, visualisation and, you know, throwing baskets without actually touching the basketball, throwing darts without actually touching the dartboard. And your skill improves because it internalises it and then you get on to actually doing it. It doesn't take so long to adjust. So there you go. <clears throat> Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm so that must be my quote for the day. There you go. Oh, dear. A spoke shave would have been good on your hands today, would it, Duck? Yeah, you can borrow mine here. Yeah. Which one do you want a curved one or do you want a flat one? There you go, quick. Take it. Take it. Freddie, take it. 
No, I'm not going, well, okay, you don't want it. Don't worry about it. I'll use it later. Has Sue had her swing in her rocker yet? No, not yet. I, um, I couldn't find the rest of the bolts, but I just found them. So this afternoon, I will go back and put it in, and then she can have a rock. She's not allowed to anyway. It's not her birthday till Monday. Morning, Brian. Did I say good morning before before you even got here? So, good morning. Now I know you're here. <clears throat> no, sandpaper's a bit sad in that regard, I've got, I've got to admit. Mm. Yeah, I believe there's been some big storms over there. The backer. Oh, see, John, life is good. You've got an espresso. <clears throat> I'm going to have one. I haven't had a decent coffee for days. Oh, now, all right. I've got to clean these out. This, this, hopefully this is manually adjustable so it hasn't changed overnight. I actually, I've got a question. I've got a question. Does anyone else suffer from this? Last night, I cleaned the kitchen. Just in case you missed it, I'll say it again. I cleaned the kitchen. And all the cords, because we've got the routers, no, not the routers I use down here, the computer routers, on the kitchen bench, and it goes to phones, and it goes to splitter boxes and all that stuff. Now, I plug them in. No one moves them, no one touches them. You go back a week later, all the cords are all tangled up. The same behind the desk in my office. I've got, I think, six hard drives, three screens, two computers, and a bunch of other stuff. And they're all nicely plugged in, in line. Run straight through to the bit of equipment. You go there a month later, they're all mixed up. And is, it, is it gremlins that come in at night? What is the go? Or is it the force of the electricity? I don't know, I haven't worked it out, but it happens. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's snow as well. Oh, that's, that's, that's great, Duck. No spoke shave and snow as well. <laughs> oh, I guess that'd be the coffee and <laughs> tobacco, yep. Yeah, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's weird, Brian. It really is. No, I don't have cats. We had one once, but didn't like it. Sue roasted it, but that was no. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I reckon gremlins. <laughs> that's, that's my brain, I think, Blue. Blue, Bob couldn't fit behind my desk. Seeing the width of him? All right. Now, so, this being manually operated shouldn't have changed from last night. So we'll see. Oh, look at that. Look, see, I haven't got my hand over the extractor port either. Now, I'm bringing it down to where these shelf dados came through. So I'm bringing it down level. The reason for that is when the backing boards go on, and, and this is harking back to what um, Krenoff talks about, you do the unexpected. When they're on, people aren't going to see the back anyway because it's on the wall. But then you're going to have this ugly little... Whoosh. Ugly little checkout bit where the shelf came through. So I'm taking that down so it's flat. So that will then sit flush up against it. It's one of those little nuances. Now the word for the day is nuance. I really impressed myself because I can say words I can't spell. <clears throat> Okay. 
One more, I reckon. Okay, that's done. Now, oh, this is this is where I've got to use mathematics, and I've got to figure out if I can do what I want to do, and if I can, how am I going to do it? <clears throat> so I have to measure the width from here to here from the bottom of the tails. And then I have to work out the width of the shelves. And <laughs> I'm going to have to pull that a lot longer because it's not long enough. <clears throat> Let me get a longer one. And this is where we're talking about imperial and metric. This is, for me, where it is, <laughs> is so wonderful to have both because I can line it up to whatever is the closest. That is 28, 26 inches and 5 eighths. Hang on. <laughs> I'll put me Mr. McGoo glasses on. <clears throat> Gee, that sounds sus. The door opened and no one came in. Is that you, my beloved? Well, hello, darling. Hello, darling. Here you go. You're right. Good to see you got out of bed. Oh, have you? Oh, I got. I told the people. You got a brand new quilting system, so you can tell them about that. I just got to mark this. Okay, so that's six hundred and seventy-five, six seven, six hundred and seventy-seven. All right. I will leave that. I'll just double check down here before I give it over to the star of the show. Yeah, they'll do. 677. Oh, Jesus. You can't see with those on. <laughs> Come over here and lay some skin upon me. No, we got a social distance. Have we? So Tell you what, we... if you've got something and I haven't got it by now, there'd be something. <laughs> I think so. Hey, did we get dressed coordinatedly? We, we could be Siamese so twins. Joined at the lip. <laughs> oh! <laughs> joined at the butt. What well, is the fascination with you hitting me on the backside all the time? Because you're cheeky. Oh, okay. Go on, you tell them. You, you, you just get that the off you. A new here. quilting technique. A new quilting technique. Yeah. You've got to talk to me. Get close. Okay. Oh, dear. This is why I don't give her a microphone, because then I've got to cuddle her. My new quilting technique. I finished, I've been doing a few UFOs, unfinished objects. Um, yesterday looked really, really great until I washed it. What, what colour was it? There was red. Then there was yellow in between that. And then there was, no, sorry, there was yellow, red, yellow, red, and then I binded it with yellow. Okay, put it in the wash machine. All come out, the yellow come out orange. So there you go, it's a surprise do quilt. Do not, do not it's... put red and yellow together because you end up with orange. Well, I think red, we found out before with red fabric. If you're gonna, Runs. if a, Fabric is going to run, I'm telling you, it's going to be red. Or black. Oh, yeah, I haven't had yeah, so much black, fabric. But black. we should wash the fabric before yeah, we do we it, should. eh? But it, it looks good. You wouldn't have picked... It's like an apricot sort of it orange, is, isn't it? It is, yeah. You yeah. wouldn't have picked so it to do it in the first place. Nah. But, it's, but the weird <laughs> really thing is... Pretty. The weird thing is the, the inside... The inside yellow. Is it? yellow, but yeah. it's a different bolt of yellow. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't affect the embroidery. No, not at all. So go figure. But that's so. life. You got one. This one today. Did you just do that one? Yes. Just finished that one and I've got oh, another one going. That's nice. Is that for me? Hey, 
We've got a trifle, haven't we? We have got trifle. I was halfway through a Swiss roll last night, finished up the crumb cutlets that I should have had two days ago. <laughs> Finish those up. But, 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 but what? <coughs> that means she's going to lie when she clears her throat. No, I'm not. You, no, you're not going to say anything. What's it all look social distancing? <laughs> and I'm halfway through a Swiss roll that was very nice, chocolate cream filled. And Bob's there expectantly hoping he gets some. And then Sue goes, ah, oh, there's trifle in the fridge. If, if you were Trevor's wife, you would have bought him the trifle. Might have worn it in the bowl on the top <laughs> of his head, but she would have bought it into him. So now, but then, and then, oh, you can have trifle tomorrow night. Yeah, I've got two grandkids in the house. What are my chances? I might have to this. make an apple crumble for <laughs> Noah. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, we're going through some gas in the cooker, aren't we? Yeah. It's good, but there's a lot of good tucker being going on. Okay, now, well, let's have it just before we do that. A swish roll. Oh, there you go. Backers having one. <laughs> Oh, oh, good all these people saying hi. I don't know why you don't have your own channel. Trevor says, good day, Sue. But the, uh, the backer says, time to say, hi, Sue. Hi, <coughs> Lucas says, hi. Wombat says, hi. Max says, good morning, Mrs. Hales. See, he is so formal. I think that's nice. She'll get me saying it soon, mate. She will. <laughs> Do you know who Blue Wren is? No. He's my most favourite as vet, what lives in Tasmania. Oh! oh. Cindy Lauper of the hair design. Oh, okay, yeah. That's it. Okay. Have you still got the distinguished white look? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I, thanks for bringing that up, Blue Wren. Yeah, no, I, I just mentioned that again. Oh, I um, just. Why did you clean the kitchen? Oh, did you notice? Did you notice? I did. It looked good, didn't it? It did. I got out of bed this morning, went in to make a cup of tea. I thought I was in someone else's house. Started to get the guilt complex. Had to come back, check it was you in the bed. Well, Maybe it was all you right do then. do it more often. Well, check, see if it's you in the bed. No, no. Is that permission? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to get so shot. <laughs> Luckily, I'm staying at home. <laughs> so am I. See, look, she confirms. You can. I thought you were back of me up. I thought you were my wingman there for a minute, Ren. I thought, hello, we have we have cohesion. We have a backup. But no, you were just double checking. Huh. Hi, Sue. Where's Where's Duck? He hasn't said good morning, Mum. Oh. Good morning, Hi, Sue. Duck. Ducky. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. So she didn't expect that, Prunella. You want to pre-wash your fragments? Oh, yeah. Thanks for the pre-warning. Do you know how many red quilts she's got? Do <laughs> you know how much fabric I've got? <laughs> I don't just buy it by the metre. No. I buy it by the bolts. Yeah, what was it? Um, we were in a fabric store on the Gold Coast once. Was it? It was East Coast Fabrics, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and they were closed. That store That's, was uh, That was a burly. And Susie's walking around the shopping trolley full of bolts of timber, a uh, timber, oh, fabric. fabric. Yeah, well, it was your timber, isn't it? Really, fabrics. I mean, yeah. Anyway, bolts of this, fabric. and she's standing there looking for some more stuff to buy. And I'm, I'm not talking half a dozen. I'm talking twenty or thirty bolts. <laughs> and she's looking for more. And this woman comes up and's going through a trolley. And she said, "Are you right?" She said, oh, "I'm just seeing anything I like." She said, no. She said, I'm buying that. The woman said, oh, I thought you worked here. You were stocking the shelves. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Actually, it was quite funny this morning on Facebook. My memory was something about when we were in the old house, I'd taken over Steve's workshop. So, um, and it said, you know, I've got so much fabric. <laughs> so my answer to it was... Oh, that was when we were on the coast. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I'm thinking she's trying to take over another one of my sheds now. Don't ever hope, why not? And I went, yeah, well, my sewing room now is about five or six times as much and I've got about a hundred times more fabric. Have you seen those big compactus things? She's got two of those. One's got eight <laughs> fingers and the other's got four, isn't it? Something I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, if, if, if any fabric 
people can't get fabric, they'll ring Sue up and want to buy it from her. Like Spotlight or it's Walmart. You put red and yellow together. Yeah, no, you've you got to have pre washed. I put them up with my own colour. That's it. <clears throat> anyway, I'm rabbiting on too much now. Why? I do it all the time. They love it. Did you just admit to the fact you dribble? No. <laughs> Oh, here comes Robert. I don't dribble. I just come up with exciting, important stuff. Well, there you go. You just contradicted yourself. You dribbled, explaining why you don't dribble. Oh, what's the one John's got? One of our sons, he walks around the house with a T-shirt. No, I'm not arguing. I'm merely putting stating a... The stating the fact that you're, why you are wrong. There you go. Oh, that's a go. Max said try salt in the wash. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's it. Yeah. Because I did some tie-dyeing at one stage, and yes, I had to put... Dean says hi. hi. Say, say hi to Dean. Hi, Dean. Oh, there it just goes. Baking soda is another one. Mm. I use vinegar. It takes off the smell and freshens things up. If not vinegar, then it's urea. Yeah, there's if you can buy vinegar. I've got heaps mm. now. Only because I went and bought you some. That's true. Da oh, aren't you a fence sitter? Hey, I like it. Very diplomatic. You can never earn enough fabric or clamps. See, so he's got just... You, you have to. <laughs> He's got nearly as many clamps as I... But those springy yeah. clamps. Because they help to hold the quilt down while you're... That's it. Sewing it. Or pinning it together. Oh. Sue so can do, bro, I'm not arguing, I'm just right. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, what's the saying? Here we go. Saying for the day. Susie's sensational sewn saying segment. Yeah. Gee, that's a lot of S's, isn't it? I have a bin for fabric I keep hoping to use someday. <laughs> what was it you did the other day? You start, oh, no, it was the masks. Yeah. All of a sudden, all these fabrics she's throwing out, she skipped diving to get all the fabric scraps out so she can make masks. Oh, yeah, right, Prunella, I'm getting onto it. Oh, they just, just they get into you, don't they? Here we go. Nourish your soul. And that means getting in and doing craft work. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's art, painting small things, red, or woodwork, or uh, sewing, or painting or writing poetry or cooking is whatever nourishes your soul. I think... Trifle does mine. What? Yeah, no, that fills your tummy. It's when uh, your soul is. <laughs> this, Not even going to go there. No, don't, because there's a whole heap of dad jokes you could do. <laughs> on. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went to Spotlight the other day and... Um, the amount of people was incredible. And the lady said to me, she said, look, there are so many crafty people, even people that are not crafty are coming in and starting it because it stops them from going up the wall. Actually, the real crafty ones would be knocking the stuff off, wouldn't they? Yeah, probably. Because they'd be crafty, but that's a different crafty. Yeah, absolutely. It is. I don't need to see the boys in blue. <laughs> no, no. They, they, they don't respect social distancing. No, they don't. They don't say, here, the cuffs, put them on yourself. <laughs> hey, what's the go there? It's hypocrisy. No, don't start me. I'll no, have an old man around. Oh, I was going to say Steve's nourishment is trifle and Swiss rolls, but he beat me to it. But you are so right. You are so right. Oh. bum. Ah, oh, there you go. All mm. right. All right. So, I'll leave again. All right. I'm missing you already. My, my brother-in-law. Oh, dear, oh, dear. He did this thing. I can't go right into it. But <laughs> it what was it came yes, up? He was a wonderful person. Yeah, he said he was a wonderful person. Was it as innocent as a newborn baby. No, that's right. It was, how was your mind? That's right. He came back as innocent as a newborn babe. And then he was prattling on saying how right that was. And Sue wrote something on there and then I wrote, yeah, well, I agree with that because babes are beautiful and innocent, but we know what they're full of. And he wasn't sure if I was having a go at him or not. So I tried to explain to him that I wasn't and he didn't get the point. 
But there you go. It's all right, Tone. We love you. <laughs> hey, Tone, what's, what's you flipping, flipping kisses out there, nauseam to there? Well, well, That's not social distancing. Just come and give me, come on. Maybe they don't get kisses as many as you. No, I'm not going to say that because if I said what I was thinking, I'd never get another kiss in my life. <laughs> oh, again on the bottom. She's a good girl. All right, darling. I catch you, Ron. You will. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Max said they had local, local Coles had security guards for three weeks. Now they haven't. Or well, perhaps they've, they've run out of budget. Maybe. Okay. Now, moving right along. She's off. <clears throat> oh, dear. All right. Um, 677 was the number I last thought of. So what I've got to do is <clears throat> measure off. We're going to go for a slide and dovetail here. Ah, if we can. Oh, dear. Because I did these a long time ago. Let me just go over and... What do you got, darling? You want to go out? Or you go out with Mum? There you go. We'll see you a little bit later on. Always welcome. Oh. Now, I've moved that pane of glass over here, so I should be able to come over here quite safely without breaking anything. And sharpen my pencil. Oh, all good. Okay, so now I've got to measure from here. Do you have to put me Mr. Magoo glasses on again? Up to 677, which is there. So that's free shelf. And then I have to allow for the depth of... Of the tenon, which is pretty close to that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we can do that. So there we go. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah. Vertigo. Now, that means that's got to be cut off there. Oh, before we do that, I've got to... I'm guessing that's got to be pretty close to three-eighths of an inch. On. Oh, I'm thinking. Double check this, only because I want to. And that should be the distance of the thickness of that. I'll just take that a little bit longer, I think. Better to plane a bit off because we've cut it too long and try and stick something on because we've cut it too short. <clears throat> oh, there you go. Thanks, Tobacco. And also, if you haven't before, I'd appreciate it if you whack the um, 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 subscribe button. I actually did go up a couple of subs, so that was nice. So this one here. And I'm thinking this Dado plane is the one to use, I'm hoping. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a bit. 
We went a bit big on that one, but that's that. I'm, I'm thinking as I'm going here because I'm going to dock that off. with a drop saw, but first of all, I think we'll plane this down to width. So we've got, that one's fine. And, this one, okay. that to there. I've got to take this much off. <laughs> ah, where's me? Where's me good? That's what I should be using. Gives me a much, those Veritas ones I use are terrific, but these Collins gives me a much better cut. And it's a beautiful marking gauge to use too. So if you want to know where you can get Colin Clinton stuff from, he does my squares and marking gauges. They are available from Terry at h and Gordon, or you can contact... Colin Direct, Colin Clinton Tools, but Terry generally has the stock on hand. All right, now I'm going to run a pencil down there with a very fine point. Just so, not so it goes like that. Where is a rubber? Got to have an eraser here somewhere. There we go. Knew there'd be one somewhere. Um, that's a, a trick that I've, I've often shared. If you get pencil marks on timber, take them out with an eraser. Don't try and sand them out because all you're doing is pushing the graphite deeper into the grain and you'll end up with a dip in your surface. Okay. So grain is running that way, which means I'll put it in the vise this way, so it's running that way, and we will plane it down. Put a bit of water in there first. Water in the vise really helps hold it steady. If I put that in there like that, it'll move. But if I put a squirt of water on the jaws first, and then put it in, it won't move. It sticks. Ah, oh, let's see. What do all cams look like on this one? Mm. I don't know. We'll go back a bit. 